both the intensity of AM radio and its penetrability through very large structures seemed a logical course of study to Dr. Reif. Now the frequencies employed in AM radio are far too low for any resonant shatterings to occur. But by impressing a gigahertz pulse upon this carrier wave, an effective means of shattering a series of microorganisms might be had. In this method, it was electrocution which was to kill the infecting bodies, not simply acoustic pressure. These radio pulses could harmlessly pass through the host body and shatter all the disease-causing organisms. But how would this affect delicate cells of the body, such as the neurons of the brain and the blood cells? The answer to this came with divinely applied serendipity. Dr. Reif discovered to his amazement that every cell within the human body was some 10,000 times more resilient to radio resonant bombardment than any of the species of microorganisms which have plagued our world. With such a tool, it might be possible to saturate an infected person with the proper resonant frequencies to affect a sterilization of the infectious condition. The only negative effect upon the host body thereafter would be the sudden release of dangerous toxins into the person's bloodstream. When the emanations of Dr. Reif's ray tube are to this day applied to an infected person's body, such is the case that a mild depression follows the application of the rays. This is eradicated by having the person ingest suitable electrolytic solutions, which are used to carry off the toxins quickly. Dr. Reif used a helium ray tube arc to direct the energies, using the pulses of a diathermy machine to modulate an AM transmitter with the ability to vary the frequency selectively, Dr. Reif successfully demonstrated the safe resonant shattering of disease microorganisms, including all viruses. He compiled lethal frequency values for all the known disease-causing organisms. He also discovered, quite accidentally, a yet more beautiful effect when killing viruses and other agents with his ray tube. These effects were measurable up to eight miles away from the lab, regardless of position or enclosure of the cultures. To secure his own test cultures for further research, Dr. Reif had to build special multi-wall aluminum vaults in order to shield out the cure waves. What this inferred was broadcast inoculations for the public health, free of charge. This opened the doors of possibility too far for certain competitors to accept. The possibility that Reif's microscope might overturn the electron microscope market, newly developed and returning millions, was all too evident. The Rockefeller-backed industry of RCA and Bell Labs was to be the status quo. No little research man from the West Coast was going to be their competitor. Reif had never entertained any thoughts of making fortunes. His was the altruism of the good physician, to alleviate world suffering and to cure his patients. I swear by Apollo Physician that with purity and with holiness, I will pass my life and practice my art into whatever houses I enter I will go to them for the benefit of the sick and will abstain from every voluntary act of mischief and corruption. The unethical practice of certain few in pivotal places represents nothing new in the world of monarchic greed.
But in America, this is as foreign as the disease which we will eradicate. What Dr. Reif's findings indicated was the possibility of public health on such a huge scale as to match, in the medical arts, the very findings of Nikola Tesla in free energy. Neither of these could be tolerated. The horror of free energy and free medicine was as inconsistent with the monarchic dynasty's plans for unlimited wealth and control as you may well imagine. It is with such in mind that the fate of czars may be best appreciated. While it was to be much later in Europe that such devices were developed, Dr. Reif in America was to be another man destroyed. Antoine Priore, in France, during the 60s, developed certain plasma tube generators which seemed to be effective in eradicating certain infections, including cancer. Shown here, Dr. Priore's plasma tube arcs were huge and, may we say, somewhat unpredictable. These plasma devices of Priore had a bad habit of exploding occasionally. His dream was to effect total body saturation. The French government was backing Dr. Priori's work until one tube too many exploded. Another researcher in America was George Lachowski, who developed this multi-wave oscillator device based on assumptions of Dr. Nikola Tesla. George Lachowski constructed this device. It was designed to release waves of a wide variety in order to affect sterilization of wounds. Dr. Thomas Henry Moray had also constructed certain types of plasma tubes shown here. In various articles, Dr. Moray described electrotherapy. Certain persons we have heard from have been exposed to certain of the remaining tubes of Dr. Moray, and their report is that upon such exposure to the rays emanating from these tubes, such strength and vitality seem to linger for days that it is hard to imagine. The efficacy of these ray tube devices was reported by several medical doctors. Dr. R. E. Seidel wrote the following words, quote, Under the microscope of rife, disease organisms such as tuberculosis, cancer, sarcoma, streptococcus, staphylococcus, typhoid, and many others may be observed to succumb when exposed to certain lethal frequencies peculiar to each individual organism and directed upon them by rays covering a wide range." Close quote. The rife cancer cure was also reported in the journal in volume 237, number two of the Franklin Institute. Throughout the years of his illustrious life, Dr. Raymond Rife enjoyed both the support, company, and following of large numbers of the medical community. At the hands of Morris Fishbein, the then ruling and subversive secretary of the AMA, Dr. Reif was slandered and maligned, accused and threatened, and finally overruled by government law acting at the behest of the association. Wherever there is a monument yet to be placed for greatness, compassion, and triumph over human suffering. Let one name on that monument read for Dr. Raymond Reif, pioneer and discoverer of cancer therapy, whose own suffering at the hands of the greedy and the powerful will not be reckoned vain.
The ray of discovery is touching many different places today. It is arcing widely and rapidly in its blazing path. These paths are never isolated to one region or nation. 